The party in power said it inherited the mess. The previous party blamed the current one for dropping the ball. Both parties, however, agreed on the solution. More of exactly the same policies that created the crisis. Expanded power to the Federal Reserve, more government control over the economy, more subsidies and benefits, and more international commitments. These were so-called emergency reforms which became law. The same men who created the problem prescribed the solution. The public was grateful to have leaders of such vision and wisdom. What I just read is from a book entitled The Creature from Jekyll Island. It's from the chapter called The Pessimistic Scenario. It was published in 1994. The author of the book is G. Ed Griffin. It sounds almost like what's happening in Greece. I spoke to Mr. Griffin to ask him what would his next chapter include if he were writing on Greece. Well, I think the next chapter for Greece is pretty much uh, the same as the next chapter for us here in the United States. Greece has been, unfortunately, following the role model of the United States, in, at least in financial matters, and that role is, uh, you know, just spend, spend, spend money which we don't have to go deeper into debt and, uh, you know, taking money uh, from the taxpayers indirectly. Most taxpayers don't understand that they're paying for all this because the taxes directly do not go up in direct proportion, but the money that's been created by debt floods into the economy. It creates all kinds of inflation, the loss of purchasing power, and so the citizens pay for all of these things indirectly in the form of inflation, and they don't really understand that they're really paying a tax. It's a hidden tax, but in any event, all of this must be paid, whether it's in Greece or in Great Britain or in Germany or in France or the United States. It must always be paid by the citizens. So when the government gets out of control like this and just starts creating money literally out of nothing to fund all kinds of political programs that keep the established politicians in power, sooner or later, you know, the system comes down upon them. And so where does that go? I, I'm afraid I don't have a, an optimistic scenario. All of these things uh, have happened before. If you look in history, you've seen every country, every system, every culture, every civilization that's ever resorted to fiat money and debt financing for government projects and political projects, all of them have collapsed. There's not one in history that survived. And I see no reason to think that uh, any of us in whatever country we live have been given an exemption from this law of history. And the only difference is that in today's world, the technology is so far advanced that it may be possible for those in power to literally uh, fix their system upon mankind in such a way that none of us can escape. In other words, there's a globalization process going on. It used to be that if the currency of one nation collapsed, people could always turn to the currency of another nation, or they could migrate to another country. There was always that possibility. But today, we're moving into a situation where that door is being closed. So it's theoretically possible because of technology and the means of communication and the globalization process that maybe the end of this process will not be a door to a recovery. It always has been in the past. The, the collapse of these systems has always led to a door that opened up to another system beyond it and perhaps a greater system and, and greater prosperity and greater freedom and all that. But now if this door is closed, we might be looking at a very long period of history of what we might call the dark ages of the present era, a, a sort of a high-tech feudalism. I'm afraid that that's where we're heading and I hope it's not going to be that way, but as long as the people of the world remain uninformed, basically ignorant of this process, and they keep turning to their political leaders, the very ones who created the problem, and they turn to those people and say, well, solve the problem, get us out of this problem, and they accept more of the same, as long as that goes on, I'm afraid we're just going to continue to spiral down. I look forward to the day when people begin to understand this tremendous fraud that's being perpetuated, this banking fraud, this political fraud, and they can throw off that system and go back to a, a system where the monetary a unit is backed by something tangible like gold or silver 
where the money cannot be just created out of thin air by bankers and politicians. And when that happens, I think we'll have the foundation for a return to prosperity and ultimately freedom once again. I get this feeling, at least here in Greece, that uh, the citizens uh, feel helpless. They feel as if they cannot change the situation. That's a common feeling, I think, in all countries of the world. It's certainly a feeling that's very prevalent in the United States. And the reason, of course, it's not hard to understand is because what the people want is generally ignored by the political leaders. I mean, perhaps one of the biggest problems of the current age around the world is that our governments really do not represent the people. Even though there's that image and that tradition, this thing called democracy, we vote for our elected representatives, and we think that because we cast the vote, that therefore they are beholden to us. But that's kind of a sophomoric or a kindergarten view of politics. The reality is that the politicians in most countries do not listen so much to those who write letters to them as they do to those who write checks to them. And that's the reality. And so we find ourselves in all countries where the the political structures have fallen into into the hands of the very wealthy and powerful corporations and the banking interests, the financial interests that control the economy. And so we've changed a lot from that image. And yes, there's good reason for people to feel discouraged and like they can't do anything about it, but they can. They definitely can, and perhaps this is not the time or the place to get into that, but we here have started a movement. I have played a major role in it. We call it Freedom Force International, and it's a group of people all around the world. We now have representatives in 78 different countries, And our goal and our mission is to recapture control of these uh, governments and put them back into the hands of people who do represent the people. And and how do you go about this in a peaceful way? We go about recapturing the power centers of society the same way we lost them. And when I say the power centers of society, I'm talking about those groups and organizations that really determine the political destiny of, of every nation. Primarily, we're talking about the political parties, We're talking about the media centers, the labor unions, the church organizations, the teachers associations, and so forth. All of these groups that have political influence, if you look at them carefully, it's an amazing phenomenon to see that the heads of those organizations generally are part of the problem. These are people who are dedicated to the system the way it is. They like it, and they're pushing it in the same direction. Well... This came about because there's been a strategy for many years for people who, well, let's call it what it is, these are the elitists, these are the ones who believe in what they fondly call the new world order, the ones that want to control the world and determine the fate of every human being, they're the master planners, they think they're smarter than the rest, they want to rule, and they have had this plan, they've gone in to capture control of these power centers of society, just a small number of them, less than 1%, actually less than a half of 1%, but they're in positions of tremendous power and influence at the very top of of the political parties and all those other groups that I talked about. Well, that didn't just happen overnight. This is a long-term project. We can reverse that project. Uh, We can reverse that process. You know, a lot of people are just concerned, well, well, who are you going to vote for? That's the extent of their strategy. And and they're content just to vote for candidates who have been selected by this elite group. And just because they think they have the vote, not realizing that they didn't have any voice in the selection of who they're voting for, they think that the vote alone gives them power over their political destiny. But anyway, anybody that really wants to make a substantial change in the world can do so. And a good place to begin is with our website, which is freedomforceinternational.org.